What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about detailing in Revit. Uh, now in this video I'm going to be showing you the two main approaches to creating details in Revit. Uh, these approaches are, or they're vastly different, and the idea is you decide depending on your situation, your uh, project, your detail, uh, you, de uh, you decide which one of these approaches you want to use. So I want to show you both, and then you can decide. Now before we jump into Revit, I would just like to take a moment to talk about today's video sponsor, and that is HSB CAD. HSB CAD provides uh, flexible software solutions for both uh, AutoCAD and Revit in the off-site construction industry. Uh, they have over 30 years of experience and they have helped over uh, 500 companies achieve peak performance by improving their efficiency in terms of design and manufacturing as well as assembly. Uh, now, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you their new tool set uh, that's uh, designed for creating custom, uh, customized uh, connections uh, and edges. Uh, it's called HSB uh, Stick Frame, and it's coming to market for the first time on the 24th of September. So that's quite soon. Uh, now, this is the only tool set that allows you to, uh, to configure corner connections that are suitable for pretty much any system. Uh, it allows you to modify your sheets, uh, your beams, your anchor beams, rotation of elements, you can anchor everything, and then once you kind of create your connection the way it should be, then you can name it, you can save it, and then you can apply it inside of your model wherever it's necessary to be. And then if we just remove kind of the top plate, you can view in 3D view that connection uh, and see if, if it has been applied everywhere where it should have been applied. Uh, now for my audience only, HSB CAD has provided a fully free 30-day exclusive trial to HSB stick frame. Uh, so you just have to use the coupon code here, HSBCAD- Balkan Architect. Uh, you sign up. I'm going to include a link both uh, in the description of this video and then up in the cards above. So it's only going to be available for the first 35 users that sign up. So make sure to be quick about it. Uh, and then you'll, uh, you'll get access on the 24th of September. So you can just sign up now and you'll get access later. Uh, and if this topic of off-site construction is something that's interesting, uh, interesting to you and if you would like me to make perhaps complete tutorials on this topic, uh, please tell me in the comment section below. Okay, so without any further ado, let's now jump straight into Revit. So as you can see, here I am in Revit, and this is a, a office building project that I have, and this is what I'm going to be using for uh, creating these uh, details. Uh, now, if you want to learn more about this particular project, I actually have like a whole course that kind of covers from start to finish, step by step, how to create this uh, cool office building and also how to create all of the kind of following documentation, like this section here, for example. All of that is available on my website, balkanarctic.com. It's going to be the first link just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above. Uh, there you can also find like a detailing course that they have. Uh, uh, so if you're really serious about details, you can check that out as well. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's now explore the first approach to creating details in Revit, and that is by creating a callout. So what a callout is, it's located here on the view tab. Uh, here, as you can see, we have a callout option. We can open up the drop menu. You can either use a rectangle or you can sketch it out yourself. So basically, this is kind of grabbing a little window a little detail out of your model. Now you can be in a section view, but also it can work in a floor plan view. So if I go here to, I don't know, like second level, if I zoom in here, I can create a call out or of any particular part of this building. So it doesn't matter if it's a section, if it's a floor plan, ceiling plan, whatever, it is going to work in all plan views. Uh, but for example, if I go back to my 3D view, obviously now it's grayed out because you can have like call outs and in 3D views. Uh, so anyways, let's go back to the section and let's say that I want to create a bit more uh, detailed uh, explanation of what's going on in this connection. Here we have this kind of inset 
wall a little bit and we have some insulation it it does look fairly complicated so we need to figure out kind of a solution for this so uh, let's let's do that so to create a call out you just go here and you click on the call out and then i'm just going to click once here and you drag out this rectangle uh to create that window you click again and there you go this is your call out position you also get this little window which you can kind of slide around see and i like to place it somewhere where it's not going to be kind of interfered with perhaps here and then you can use this little elbow to kind of adjust it just make it like that so here this is going to display the the sheet and uh, the view number of this particular callout so anyways if i just double click here on that that's going to open up that callout and this is now your detail view you can see that the uh, detail level has been set to course i like to set that to fine and then also uh, here you have the scale it's going to default to 25 or 1 to 25 and then you can customize that further if uh, if you want perhaps something a little bit different Okay, now moving forward, let's say that here, uh, for example, I have added this kind of yellow panel here, uh, which is just kind of reporting that here it's non-transparent, it's not glass like this one here, uh, but it still probably doesn't look like this. So we have to fix that a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is just go to the annotate tab and then this is where you do your detailing work. So I can just go here to region, for example, go with the masking region, and then just create like a rectangle here, just like that, for example. I can go to the align tool, make sure to align it here, just by using the panel above. So there we go, we have this panel, and now if I hit finish, it's going to look like that, but we still have this little yellow here. So I can perhaps select this, and then go to copy, copy it from here to here. There we go. And also perhaps I can just try to adjust this. There we go. So just make sure to kind of snap it to the that, that edge. And now as you can see, this looks uh, a lot more realistic. Here we have that non-transparent panel, uh, and then behind we're going to have our insulation. Uh, now also here, what I like to do for insulation, I like to have a, like this kind of yellow background. You can see that in the, in the section here. See how I like to have that yellow background and then the batting line over that. Now here we do seem to have an issue where this panel here is a little bit more orangey and this one is a bit more yellowish so if you want them to uh, or I for example want them to be perhaps the same color and also I want this insulation to go and cover this profile here so see this little gap here here we have this uh, curtain wall mullion and I just want this to cover that I, I don't want heat to escape through this little narrow corner uh, so to fix all of that, I can again go here to region, but in this case go with filled region. Uh, and I'm going to go here to solid white uh, and just go to edit type. And here I'm just going to, oops, first let's duplicate that and let's call this one the solid yellow. Okay. Uh, go to the color and then change it to some yellow. Just make it a lot brighter like that. Click OK. And now we can just use pick lines pick this line here, 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 okay, did it pick this one, okay, that's weird, this is, okay, anyways, let's create a new line over that, and then you can just kind of follow it, go all the way here, down, follow back here, and then you can just use trim and extend, for example, to kind of complete this uh, whole shape, and if everything is connected correctly and I think it is when I hit finish okay overlapping lines I guess that's this here or I don't know nope it's not that we do have some overlapping lines I just can't figure out where they are that's a little bit annoying is going to show us okay there we go we have something here so let's click continue okay that's probably from clicking here I don't know why it went all, all the way there but anyways let's just hit finish and there we go
So now once we have this, I can continue adding insulation, for example. So here I can measure the gap. So this one is, let's see, 9.95. So we can use that insulation. 9.95 and then here instead of the center we go to near side and just go down like that and then in this case it's going to be a little wider I think it's like 20 centimeters and then go from here perfect and now as you can see that looks a lot better than the original one here in this section. So that's how we can add more detail by using these callouts. Uh, now in some situations you're not going to want to go with something that's connected to your model. So for example if you're coming from an AutoCAD background uh, you probably already have just like a bunch of details that you have saved up and then you just kind of pull it out of the box out of the details folder and then you just include that in the uh, in the model and perhaps you are in the drawing uh, and perhaps you just change some of the dimensions for example if the detail is for a 20 centimeter wall and you have like a 25 centimeter wall you just increase the size of that wall in the detail and you're done so you can actually do that inside of Revit people think it's not possible it's actually possible and for that we use a different type of a detail so here uh, for the callout we used obviously a callout tool uh, but we also have this drafting view. Now the drafting view can be used for detailing, but it can be used for pretty much anything in Revit. It's, well, it's just a drafting view. So when you open it up, uh, you can name it. So here I can call this one the detail. I don't know, something like that. You set up the scale. So by default, it goes to something like a detail. As you can see, it's one to 10, but obviously you can play around with it if you want. Uh, let's go 25, just like this one, click okay. And then you get this little well, you get an empty screen. So this is exactly like AutoCAD. You get an empty screen and then you draft there, you create your details, and then you can just place that on sheets next to your uh, section perhaps or, or something like that. So for these details, uh, what I like to do with them uh, is I like to utilize the fact that I can now use anything and I, I can find the detail images online and here if I just drag this over here as you can see I have this detail image of a, uh, this is a connection between a wall and a roof so this is something that you would see perhaps over here something like that so this could be used for that detail and then I can just bring this image in I can uh, pin it in place that's usually a good idea or perhaps before you pin it you go and measure so if I measure this as you can see this is 98 centimeters this is way too large so you just click uh, and then you go and you scale it So scale from here to here it's usually going to be like 20 centimeters like the concrete part there we go and then uh, you just come in here to annotate you use detail lines we have a wide selection of detail lines and then you just get started so I can go for example with wide lines for these kind of important outlines and now that you look at it this might be a little bit too uh, to course of a scale so let's go down to 1 to 10 I think Revit was correct kind of out of the box so anyways I can use this for concrete then I can go to detail lines I can go to uh, perhaps regular ones for the outside here or no uh, let's use medium lines these are green that's annoying okay there we go like that again go to detail line Oops, again, it's going to these. So detail line, medium lines. And yeah, so you can just continue kind of drafting over this. Just like that, there we go. We can do the stop part. So as you can see, you have kind of full control, full versatility. Uh, if you're ever annoyed the fact that Revit doesn't want to let you do something the way that you can do it in AutoCAD, well, then drafting view might be your friend. So there you go. You're just gonna go go around uh, drafting elements here, and then when you when it's time to print, you can just go here to your sheets. So let's see that we have some uh, sheets here. Schedule sheets, okay. We do have a sheet, okay. And then here, if I just go to 
uh, let's see, drafting views. So as you can see, drafting views will appear over here. Here we have a detail and then I can just drag that over and I can place it and now we have that detail here. So you can imagine if uh, perhaps we have if we had that section next to it. So let's see the section. Okay, we have to probably get rid of this. There we go. But we can have like a section next to that and then here we have this little detail kind of showing how this particular part of the building is being constructed and so on. So that's the that's the second approach. So depending on what you have uh, to start with and what's the end result, you can pick out uh, from these two approaches. Now, if you want to learn more about detailing, uh, how to create like a little bubble, just like we have for this call out, how to do the same thing for this drafting detail, how to link everything up and much, much more about creating detailing in Revit and all of the little tips and tricks. As I said, I have a whole entire course on my website, balkanarctic.com. It's going to be the first link or one of the links uh, below in the description and then also up in the cards above. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, please tell me in the comment section below which one do you prefer, which one you use the most, uh, the drafting view or the call out approach. Thank so you for, thank watching, for watching, guys. Make sure to uh, check out my I'll, website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.